Yeah, honorable speaker. Is Three it? minutes. Is, is it? Huh? I thought we agreed. Tell Majority me. and minority, I'll give you five each, each member three minutes. Uh, yes, Honorable Speaker, I think we should be a little bit more patient on this matter, Honorable Speaker, because this is a very, very important matter. Honorable Speaker, this is the first time this House, since 2010, is dealing with a motion for the impeachment of a cabinet secretary. It is the first time we are dealing with such a situation, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, I want to plead with you that you give us a little bit more time. Honorable Speaker, I want to start from where Honorable Kelo left, very, very quickly. Honorable Speaker, I don't think it was the intention of the framers of our Constitution, 2010, that a decision of this House would be countermanded by a group of seven people. Honorable Speaker, when we took a vote on this matter last Thursday, a whole 149 members of this House voted overwhelmingly to impeach Cabinet Secretary Mudiga Linturi. It was not the intention, I submit, of the framers of the Constitution when they enacted Article 152, Sub Article 9, read together with Standing Order 66. Seven, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, and I'm sure you know, you can teach us better. There's a danger in this uh, idea of literally interpreting the law. I'm sure you know both better than me of the, the Berryman case of 1946. Honorable Speaker, a purposive interpretation of the law would actually lead us to the conclusion that the decision of that select committee should have been subjected to validation of the whole house. Having said that, Honorable Speaker, there is, um, high, there is a higher moral responsibility, Honorable Speaker, on the part of the cabinet secretary, and indeed on the part of the appointing authority, following the overwhelming decision of this house last Thursday, in a vote of 149 against 36, I don't think this matter should have even gone up to the Select Committee stage. In more decent democracies, the moment this House voted 149 against 36 to send Mr. Linturi home, the decent thing he should have done was to resign. Failure to resign, who would have expected the appointing authority to sack him, Honorable Speaker. Those two have not happened. Honorable Speaker, we are now back here today. We are back here today to continue from where we left last Thursday. Honorable Speaker, I want to persuade my colleague members not to give up, regardless of what the, the minority of seven members have decided. Honorable Speaker, against all the available evidence, all the available evidence, the minority of seven members who have decided to let the Cabinet Secretary scot free, this House must remain firm. This House must remain firm and assert, and assert its authority. Honorable Speaker, I dare say that following the vote of last Thursday of 149 against 36, this House will be in its rightful place to resolve not to have any dealings with the Cabinet Secretary Medica Linturi. Honorable Speaker, this House has got the sovereign power on behalf of the people of, the, of this country to decide not to recognize Medica Linturi as a cabinet secretary in this government. Honorable Speaker, regardless and despite the, the resolution of the minority of four, of, of, of seven, Honorable Speaker, the minority of seven have actually brought this house to shame, if I may say so. You have brought the authority of this house into disrepute. They have actually made us become a laughing stock in the eyes of the public. And therefore, to, re to remedy, remedy that, that anomaly, to remedy that anomaly, Honorable Speaker, I would be actually right, I would be in order to persuade this House to, to decline, to refuse, to refuse to recognize Medica Linturi as Cabinet Secretary from now going forward, and to continue to urge the appointing authority, who is the President, to take the most logical step and sack this cabinet secretary, if only to save this country from the kind of ridicule it has been subjected to. With those very remarks, Honorable Speaker, I reject 
and I oppose. Thank the you. Order, Honorable Wandai, there is nothing to reject. You just make your comment. You are not going to vote anything. Uh, I now invite Honorable Osoro. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, this is a house of debates and procedures. And I dare say, Honorable Speaker, that this is a granary of wisdom where every profession is actually represented here. We have uh, experienced uh, lawyers of the uh, advocates of the High Court, we have doctors, we have accountants, we have bishops, we also have the wannabe uh, men of clothes, could be the, I, I think Honorable Junet qualifies to be a sheikh. So this is a house where people are drawn from different professions and very experienced in different fields. Honorable Speaker, this is also a house once one debates must agree that it is a house where the majority will have their way and minority will have their say. When this motion was brought before this House Honorable Speaker, the majority had their way as it were then. But the procedures took center stage thereafter. After the majority took, uh, had their way, the procedures were followed, the uh, minority proposed their names, the majority uh, proposed their names, an ad hoc committee was uh, uh, formed Honorable Speaker, and they had their own elections where they elected a chair to chair the ad hoc committee. And the chair of the ad hoc committee, Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Naomi Wako, is a reverend, is a person of great integrity, a person that has served this country in her capacity as a reverend, a person that has served this country as a canon, a person that has served this country as a senator, and a person now is serving this country, Honorable Speaker, as the deputy majority whip, Honorable Speaker. And all the proceedings, Honorable Speaker, were in full glare of the camera. We all watched what was happening. It was basically drama. Everything that we were watching, Honorable Speaker, in the proceedings were actually drama. What we were hearing, Honorable Speaker, is similar to what was actually being shown or rather presented before, or brought before uh, the, the, the matrimonial court the other day. And Honorable Speaker, there is no way a house of competence would have admitted the evidence that was brought. It was, there was nothing watertight as it was being presented, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Wamboka, as much as he tried, of course, to, in his role as a member of parliament under Article 95, to oversight, Honorable Speaker, he did not manage to raise a strong case, to bring a watertight evidence, to, to, to grow his I mean, profile by pushing through a watertight case, Honorable Speaker to have uh, the Honorable Ituri impeached. So, Honorable Speaker, I support the report by this committee because I believe in them, and as the house of debate, a house that believes in strength, a house that believes in procedures. Honorable Speaker, we proceed, it is done. We are now done with the whole thing, and now we proceed with the other Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much. Honorable Robert Mbui, three minutes, so yeah. come. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Condense your thoughts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Kenyan farmers were duped into purchasing uh, fake fertilizer through NCPB under the full glare and the watch of the CS for Agriculture. Mr. Speaker, a motion was brought to this House to dismiss that uh, CS, and members of the House voted overwhelmingly to get rid of the CS. Then, Mr. Speaker, a, co a committee of the House was put together to go and confirm the report and the vote of the members of parliament. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, the members that were put in the committee, seven of them went and turned the verdict of 149 members of parliament. And Mr. Speaker, for the record, only four members gave a dissenting opinion. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker for the record, the Honorable TJ Kajuang, the Honorable Yusuf Farah, the Honorable Catherine Omanyo, and the Honorable Robert Mbui stood with the Kenyan farmers and said enough is enough and the CS must go. Yes. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the reality is this, that when we went to that committee, Mr. Speaker, the committee, instead of carrying out investigation as was told by this House, the committee went and turned itself into a Supreme Court of Parliament of Kenya, presided over, Mr. Speaker, by the Lady Justice Naomi Wako. And Mr. Speaker, the rest of us became judges. Mr. Speaker, the question we're asking is this. Is the committee of the House supposed to operate like a court, or are we supposed to continue operating like a committee of the House? Order, Honorable Mbui. Honorable Mbui, I did guide you, and you are a member of the committee. 
I told you you are quasi-judicial. Rules of evidence apply, limitations on hearsay apply, and everything that pertains to proceedings in a judicial court applies. You are quasi-judicial. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are quasi-judicial, but we became a court of law. Mr. Speaker, there was one major issue that we noted, that uh, there were key witnesses that Mr. Speaker was supposed to have been called. The Constitution anticipates that we call witnesses. The standing orders of this House and even the rules of the committee were allowing us to call members to come and give witness uh, evidence. Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, two key witnesses, the PS for Agriculture and the COO of one of the companies that is supposedly mentioned in this fake cut fertilizer scandal, were actually not called. Honorable Mbui, as a member of the committee, you are truly being wiser after the event. Eh? Uh, Honorable John Paul. John Paul. Three minutes. You better compose your thoughts quickly. Give John Paul the mic. There you thank are. you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand to support the report from the committee and to commend Mr. Speaker their good work which they, they did within 10 days, Mr. Speaker. It is commendable that within 10 days, Mr. Speaker, the committee was able to gather evidence and to interrogate the, uh, both the parties, Mr. Speaker. And uh, today, Mr. Speaker, it has come to uh, limelight of Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, that uh, the one CS Medical Inturi is clean, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I urge members, when, we, when the motion is such, like, uh, such as this, Mr. Speaker, is brought before, the, before this House, Mr. Speaker, it's good for any member who I is bringing understand. such motion, Mr. Speaker, of impeachment to do due diligence, Mr. Speaker, and gather enough evidence, Mr. Speaker, which can, uh, which can, uh, which can uh, get maybe the minister with, uh, with the mistake which, Mr. Speaker, they had already seen the years. So, Mr. Speaker, this committee consistent, consisted of the competence members, Mr. Speaker, who are capable of, uh, of uh, interrogating the CS, Mr. Speaker, and they were able to bring forth, Mr. Speaker, to this honorable house, Mr. Speaker, that the CS is clean. Mr. Speaker, it should also be noted that uh, when impeachment motion is brought in this house, it should not bro uh, be brought, Mr. Speaker, with perception that maybe because, the, because maybe a person has a bad name or maybe the look of that person, Mr. Speaker, that person maybe qualifies to be impeached. So my advice to the CS Agriculture, Mr. Speaker, is that he should stand firm, do work to the Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, so that the Kenyans can, can have enough food, Mr. Speaker. The work he is doing currently he is doing good. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I beg to support this report. Thank you. Irene Mayaka, three minutes. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I also stand here to express my complete disappointment that honorable, seven honorable members averted the will of so many other members of this House. And Honorable Speaker, I am actually really disappointed on behalf of the farmers of not only Nyamira, but the whole of Kenya. Honorable Speaker, Article 153 of our Constitution is very clear that the CS is accountable individually and collectively to the President of this country. And in so doing, Honorable Speaker, it also says that the Honorable CS is stopped from not taking accountability when anything goes wrong in his ministry. Honorable Speaker, the CS cannot run away from the fact that the ultimate responsibility actually stands with him. Honorable Speaker, I watched the proceedings of the committee, and one of the things that really caught my eye is when the CS proudly demonstrated to the committee 
of the positive things that he has done for that particular ministry. But the same CS refuses to take responsibility when one thing goes wrong in his ministry. Honorable Speaker, if you look at Article 201 of our Constitution, it clearly says that public money shall be spent prudently and responsibly. It does not make sense, therefore, Honorable Speaker, why money that was allocated to one particular part of the department was reallocated to NCPD and therefore used in a manner that was not prudent. I do not understand, therefore, Honorable Speaker, how the Select Committee, the seven of them, decided that this CS was not culpable of the crimes that he committed. Honorable Speaker, I would also like to state this, that the Article 43 of our Constitution is very clear. It says that every person has a right to free access of food, but not only food, but that food that is actually of good quality. Honorable Speaker, the CS in his admission said that out of the 3 million bags, that only 3,000 bags were actually fake fertilizer and that they withdrew this from the people. But Honorable Speaker, that is not taking enough responsibility for a fault like that. Because Honorable Speaker, what if this particular... Time is up, uh, Honorable Mayaka, Dr. Mutunga. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity to speak on this motion. You Honorable have Speaker, three minutes. Honorable Speaker, as the chair of the Committee on Agriculture and Livestock Development, I am sure the House knows that you have been in, in, making an inquiry on this issue. Honorable Speaker, I understand the feelings of the members. This is the first motion of impeachment that we've had. I was there in the last time there was none, in this time there is one. But Honorable Speaker, the law and the constitution is very clear. And I wish to thank you for invoking, going beyond the provisions of Article 152.9a, giving us an opportunity to comment on this motion, even if the business has already been done. Honorable Speaker, as a committee, we have not completed our work. And I want to put it correctly, Honorable Speaker, that the mover of the motion approached me. And I told him the business is not yet done. It would have been prudent to wait until we finish with the report, bring that report to the table of the House, and then the mover would have looked at this report and made a decision whether there is anything that would probably stand the impeachment trial. So, Honorable Speaker, in my very considered opinion, this motion was taken in haste. We should have taken more time so that we consider the report when it is brought before the House. Honorable Speaker, our committee, or my committee, has been looking at the entire scope of the subsidy program. And we have unearthed many issues. But this was done in the full glare of the media. And that, I believe, is the reason why the members of this House believe there was something wrong with this particular issue, that Honorable Vivek Alintori had committed a crime. Honorable Speaker, I think it would have been good to wait for the report. Finally, Honorable Speaker, as we move forward as a House, we cannot make decisions based on things that we cannot substantiate, things that we cannot fully address and give evidence. I do stand, Honorable Speaker, to support the seven member and state the fact that we have always made decisions in this House. We have made decisions at the committee level. We have made decisions at the board level. And there is always voting. The number that, become, that is more than the other takes the day. Your so time it is, is not really the numbers. It is basically the decision of the committee. And you have been generous enough to give us an opportunity to comment. Honorable Speaker, the, the report will be laid on the table of this House, and the House will look at the report and see what has, what has gone on. Because we are not looking at individuals, we are looking at the entire... Otienda Molo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this, in the majority opinion, has singularly failed Kenyans and must carry a badge of shame on behalf of this House. 
for the avoidance of doubt, Mr. Speaker, Kenyans must know that the seven, six members of the Kenya Kwanzaa MPs in the team and their surrogate in Jubilee all voted to save the minister. It is only the four from Azimio who stood with Kenyan farmers. And so the farmers of Kenya must know who between Kenya Kwanzaa and Azimio are truly their friends. Mr. Speaker, it is good that Parliament spoke and spoke in a bipartisan manner. So we as a House have vindicated, but the committee has failed to respect the House as a whole. In proper democracies, the vote by Parliament in itself should have invited resignation by the Minister without even waiting for the committee to do its work. But we are not in a proper democracy under this regime. Mr. Speaker, what now must save farmers is the action by the President. The President can act and save, reflect the wishes of this House by the stroke of a pen. He does not need this House to resolve that issue. Mr. Speaker, secondly, it must be noted, and some members had questioned the wisdom of Article 152. Article 152 mirrors Article 167 in terms of the procedure for removal of a judge. Only that in that article, the Judicial Service Commission plays the role we played, and the tribunal plays the role that the committee did. It is expected under the Constitution that the committee would be a quasi-judicial committee, that we look into the merit of the issue. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, the committee, most of its members went with a preconception because they'd already spoken here against that motion. And instead of therefore ex ex exercising independence of mind, they went with a fixed uh, uh, thought. Mr. Speaker, we must learn a lesson. Number one, we should not allow the majority leader to sabotage such a motion as he did in this case. Number two, Mr. Speaker, the mover should be the one to suggest the names of those constituting the select committee. And more importantly, number three, Mr. Speaker, we should ensure that the members are knowledgeable, they have integrity, and they are independent. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Tenda Molo. Rindikiri. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You have three minutes. I would like to support the verdict that has been passed by the Select Committee led by their chairman, Madam Waku. Mr. Speaker, I want to remind this House, every year we celebrate what is called Easter. Mr. Speaker, during crucifixion of Jesus, the multitude called for crucifixion of Jesus, and they said, Let's release Barnabas. Mr. Speaker, what we are hearing now is people calling for crucifixion of Jesus and saying release Barnabas. Mr. Speaker, we cannot pretend as a house. I am very saddened to hear the vice chair of this committee, a man I respect and a mentor, disowning the sittings. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice Chairman sat for that, com that committee for three days, including the report lighting. And at no single time did he uh, withdrew from the position of Vice Chairmanship. Mr. Speaker, the decision of the Chair and the decision of the Vice Chair are one and the same. So we cannot play at for the public gallery. Mr. Speaker, we cannot detect terms as what the President of this Republic should do. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Karintoli cannot be sacrificed for doing what is good. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Karintoli did not say these three charges be brought against him. Mr. Speaker, the mover, first of all, he totally failed to prove the case himself. The failure of this, the failure of the, uh, the, the mover of the motion, he brought matters that he could not even himself substantiate. He went ahead to call for evidence support calling the PS, calling the, 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 the MD of Kel uh, uh, Chemicals. Mr. Speaker, he was looking, he was looking for evidence. He should have sought for good evidence before proceeding to bring the motion in Parliament. So, Mr. Speaker, let's abide by the rules of Parliament. Let's abide by the rules that we have set ourselves. 
Mr. Speaker, it is a shame to play for the public gallery to sacrifice a one person who has a track record of good performance in this country. And Mr. Speaker, we shall not listen to the public. We shall listen to the rules of this parliament. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Junet Mohammed. For avoidance of doubt, I ask your leaders, and this happens in every democracy, on certain issues, the leaders kata, kata, have a discretion to tell the speaker who they think should speak for them on a matter. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, there are your leaders, today uh, is a sad day, indeed very sad day for our country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is for sure that this was not the expectations of the Kenyan people today. They expected an indictment because, Mr. Speaker, what happened in this country by supplying fake fertilizer to the public, to Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, is a very grievous matter, Mr. Speaker. And for us to exonerate a cabinet minister who presided over that, Mr. Speaker, is also a very, very sad, day, a sad thing, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have won the battle, but we have lost the war. Why do I say so? Since the inception of Mr. Speaker of the new constitution, this is the first time an impeachment of a cabinet minister went through the second stage. Uh, after collection of the signature, approval of the speaker, and then it went through the house and went to the committee. I remember in the earlier two parliaments, Mr. Speaker, it never used to go past the, the uh, tabling of the motion, Mr. Speaker. So we have made a progress, and I want to thank Honorable Wamboka who remains a hero, Mr. Speaker, in this country for taking the initiative to save the Kenyan farmers, Mr. Speaker. I, if you watched, because the proceedings were live on TV, Mr. Speaker, what Honorable Linturi was talking about, instead of telling Kenyans how fake fertilizers found, found itself in the, in, the, in the market, he talked about the famous episode, the soap opera of his love gone bad, Mr. Speaker, with the Honorable Keitan. Mr. Speaker, if we continue like this, then in the national holidays when people are given honors, Mr. Speaker, we should add corruption as one of the honors that is awarded, Mr. Speaker. Corruption should now become a badge of honor in this country, Mr. Speaker. How can this House preside over a committee report that has turned the will of 346, 49 members upside down, Mr. Speaker? And they know very well the mood of the House was that they want the minister impeached. Now, it is now the, the responsibility of the appointing authority to sack that minister as, late as, as early as this afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, if you are in mature democracy, this cabinet secretary will have resigned long time ago, Mr. Speaker. He will not have been in office by now. He will have left the office, and because he has no moral authority to serve Kenyans anymore, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this parliament cannot be used as a rubber stamp, the way I see it happening today. If the fake fertilizer thing has gone the way it is going today, then fake medicine will go through, fake water will go through, fake everything will go through in this country, and the people who are going to suffer in this country, Mr. Speaker, is the Kenyan people, Mr. Speaker. If we were elected, and this is not what the Suna East people today expected, Mr. Speaker, when I saw the constitution of the committee that was done by the majority leader, the uh, <laughs> Give him two seconds. Mr. Speaker, when I saw the constitution of the committee that was done by the majority leader, the seven members from his side, I knew this is an exercise in futility. I knew the matter is dead on arrival. I could see the faces there. I know that I have been in this corridor. I have been in this parliament long enough. I have operated in this corridor of this parliament. I knew this better complete. No report, nothing useful will come out of the committee. Thank you very much. I submit to the speaker. Kimani Chungwa. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And I hear what the leader of my, uh, the minority whip is saying. And it is true, Honorable Speaker, that if you have been here long enough, like the Honorable Junet Mohammed, and many others, including Robert Mbui, who was a member of this select committee. You would know then that impeachment of a cabinet secretary is not a matter that you vote and make a decision based on emotions. It's also not a matter 
that you decide based on whether you like somebody or you dislike them, or whether they answer your calls or reply to your texts, it is a matter that is based on the law. Honorable Speaker, the preliminary objections you had from the Honorable Tiende Amolo and the leader of minority speaks volumes to the issues that I was speaking to here last week. That one, we sought to impeach a cabinet secretary without duly considering the provisions of Article 152 of our Constitution, and especially so Article 152.7, and our standing orders from Standing Order 64 to 68. Honorable Speaker, you remember me advising the Honorable, uh, the sponsor of the motion, the Honorable Wamboka, that if I were him, I would have been patient to allow conclusion, a logical conclusion of the inquiry by the, a committee of this House under the leadership of the Honorable Mutunga, the Committee on Agriculture, that I would have been patient to allow investigative agencies to investigate and see if there's culpability on either the cabinet secretary or any other public officer before proposing an impeachment motion. Honorable Speaker, this report, as you said, it is good for academics. And it is important that all the 349 members of this House read that report so that they understand that impeaching a cabinet secretary can never be anchored on our feelings, our emotions, and whether we like somebody or dislike them. That we must ensure any time you want to impeach a cabinet secretary or a public official, it is based on what is provided for in law. Was there a particularity in the allegations in that motion? I submitted the Honorable Speaker last week that the motion was laden with generalities and newspaper articles and therefore would never have passed the test of time if you subjected it to the provisions of the Constitution, our own standing orders, and indeed precedents that has been set by courts of law. And I pointed out the famous Wambora cases, because Governor Wambora, Honorable Speaker, you, know, you remember, is one of the public officers that were impeached more than any other public officer. And therefore, I want to urge members, Honorable Speaker, that this becomes a learning, a lesson to learn for us as a house. If we propose motions to impeach cabinet secretaries for the sake of it, we will make this house extremely important. We will become important because we are acting at the whim of the moment. We are not patient to get substantive issues that can truly impeach a cabinet secretary. I look forward to a day, Honorable Speaker, that under the provision of our 2010 Constitution, we will offer meaningful oversight of our cabinet secretaries, that we shall take our work seriously as a House, and we make sure, Honorable Speaker, that if we do an inquiry like we were doing, Honorable Speaker, we base all our deliberations on facts and not emotions, Honorable Speaker. I hope, Honorable Speaker, that this report, when we read, we will be able to internalize the reasons as to why those who say that all the allegations are not substantiated, the reasons and the reasoning behind it. Honorable Speaker, I know there are those who have expressed their minority opinion. And Honorable Speaker, I had a brief look at that report. And it is all based again on emotions and what they want to say are perceptions. Honorable Speaker, the drafters of our Constitution, including the Honorable Tiende Amolo who drafted this Constitution, should have then considered putting either under our values the question of perceptions, our national values, or probably part of the reasons under Article 152, 7, uh, 152 of our Constitution as to why you would impeach a Cabinet Secretary, then you should have included perceptions. But our laws, our Constitution, our standing orders, do not offer us an opportunity to impeach a cabinet secretary or any other public officer on the basis of perceptions. You may perceive somebody as dislikable, Honorable Speaker. You may perceive somebody as arrogant or as corrupt, but that is not provided for in the Constitution and in our laws. We are the lawmakers. We are the first people who should be the first defenders.
Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I was saying, Honorable Speaker, we swear by the Bible and the Holy Quran when we take oath of office to defend the Constitution and the laws of this Republic, Honorable Speaker. We must always be at the forefront to defend the Constitution and the laws of our country, Honorable Speaker. So that tomorrow, Honorable Speaker, if the Honorable Junet Mohammed gets the opportunity to serve as a Cabinet Secretary, I will not seek to impeach him on the basis of my perceptions that are not, are not objective at all. That I will seek to impeach the Honorable Junet on the basis of his performance and that which is provided for our, under our Constitution. Honorable Speaker, it is easy to speak to the gallery, to speak to the media, Honorable Speaker, because the media are saying this and that. I have seen lawyers saying that members of parliament, if the 11, somebody tweeted that uh, the 11 members times 5 million shillings is the basis on which this motion will be decided, Honorable Speaker. And it's a very senior council in this country, Honorable Speaker. It is shameful and unfortunate, Honorable Speaker, that a lawyer, an advocate of the High Court, a senior counsel, would be speaking to issues, Honorable Speaker, that any Kenyan who was watching the deliberations of this committee in the full, under the full glare of the, public, of the media, Honorable Speaker, there was nothing that could be substantiated. The Honorable Wamboka could not substantiate anything, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, as I commend the Honorable Wamboka for his fortitude, and to merit even to be able to push through a motion he knew was dead on arrival, since he could not substantiate, was based on newspaper cuttings and all the other rumors you hear in town, Honorable Speaker. At least he had the fortitude to push it on to the end. Honorable Wamboka, please next time I would urge you, let us stick to what is provided for by our standing orders, our own laws, and the constitution of the Republic. If we do that, Honorable Speaker, this House and indeed Parliament will have teeth to bite. Otherwise, if we abuse the provisions of our constitution to just collect signatures and sign signatures and push, Honorable Speaker, in an attempt maybe to blackmail or intimidate cabinet secretaries, we shall be rendering this house important, and that will be the end of parliament, Honorable Speaker. I pray to God and urge members that next time we want to impeach a cabinet secretary, yes, let it be based on the law, order, the constitution. Order, Majority Leader. Yes, we're checking what's the point of order. Mr. Speaker, I've been listening here to What's the, the point of order? Mr. Speaker, is it in order for the Majority Leader to keep on referring to Honorable, Honorable Wamboka as if he made a mistake to bring this particular motion? Because all through his speech, that was insinuating that it was a mistake by Honorable Wamboka bring this motion, Mr. Speaker. Uh, is it in order that he does that? First, I didn't understand it that way. And secondly, Honorable Wamboka made no mistake in exercising his right. Yes. And that's what Ichungwa said. All he said is that uh, exercise much more care and bring more tangible evidence. That's what I heard him say. Yes. Order, Honorable Members. I promised five. Five. It is done. I'll now.